What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is The End Times. We've gone through two different descriptions of hell so far, the second death and the lake of fire. So if you haven't seen those two videos yet, feel free to go check them out. And if you have already seen them, let's move on to our third description of hell, outer darkness. We see this three times in scripture, all in the book of Matthew. Each time it's referring to eternity. Matthew chapter 8 verse 10 through 12 says, When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is comparing eternity in peace in the presence of God and all the patriarchs to eternity in hell, the lake of fire. Matthew chapter 22 verse 11 through 14 says, But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This parable, I believe, needs an entire video of its own, but for the sake of time, Jesus is comparing those who dwell with the body of Christ, but aren't a part of the body of Christ. And they will be cast into the lake of fire, hell. Matthew chapter 25, verse 24 through 30 says, He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away, and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, we see that this is eternal damnation. This one specifically about Jesus returning to find that his follower didn't produce any fruit. Not only are each of these verses about eternity, but they're each about a follower of Christ who is weighed, measured, and found wanting. They're all called, they're all professing Christianity, but not all of them make the cut. That is quite an interesting factor. So if you believe you can't lose or give up your salvation, it's time to take another look at the word of God because we just read three verses from the mouth of Jesus himself that you can indeed give up or forfeit your salvation. Now this begs the question, why? Why is hell referred to as outer darkness? Well, this word outer is the Greek word exoteros, which means outer external outside. It's only used three times and each time it's used in these three verses we just read, which is interesting in itself. But anyways, this word darkness is the Greek word skotos, which means darkness. But here's the thing, this word darkness is used 30 times in 29 verses in the New Testament. Why does that matter? Well, if we go to one of the most famous verses in the New Testament that talks about darkness, it's not using this word. John chapter 1 verse 5 says, The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. This word darkness is the Greek word skosha, which also means darkness. It's used 17 times in 13 verses in the New Testament. Here's what I find interesting about these two different words. The first term is complete and utter darkness. There's no light whatsoever. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Paul is referring to Genesis chapter one, verse three, when God created light out of darkness, then he separated the light from the darkness in the next verse. 
Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 through 14 says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Again, we have darkness that has absolutely no light in it. The domain of darkness is the domain of Satan. And according to Jesus himself, Satan has no truth in him. John chapter 8 verse 44. If there is no truth in him, then there is no light in him. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 through 11 says, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Paul explains that darkness has no light in it, and light has no darkness in it. He then explains that the fruit of the light is doing what is good, right, and true. Therefore, the outer darkness that Jesus is speaking of has absolutely no light in it. This is now beginning to make a little more sense. See, God is light. John chapter 1 verse 4, John 8 12, John 9 5, John 12 46, 1 John 1 5, James 1 17, as well as many others. So if hell is outer darkness, then it's outside the realm of darkness that has no light. All right, let's go back a little bit. Psalms chapter 143 verse 7 says, Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. David compared God hiding his face or presence from him to going down to the pit. Now, the pit isn't hell. I want to be very clear about that. The pit is a deeper part of Sheol or Hades, according to Isaiah chapter 14 verse 15 and Ezekiel 31 verse 16. And I want to be clear, I'm not going based off of a certain translation. I'm going based off of the original Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. That's how you study the Bible. You study the original, not just a translation, because translations are based off of man's knowledge. It is always going to have man's own interpretation in it. So why bring this up? Because the Old Testament is a foreshadowing of things to come. For instance, look at Cain's punishment. Genesis chapter 4 verse 13 through 14 says, Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Cain's punishment was to be away from the presence of God. Sin separates us from God. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 through 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, or his air dull, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. In fact, Paul goes as far as to say that sin makes us enemies of God in Romans chapter 5 verse 10. Therefore, to die in your sin would be to die without God. If you die without God, then you will be without God forever. You will continue in darkness, the kind of darkness that has no light whatsoever in it. There isn't even the hope of Jesus being somewhere in that darkness and you being able to find him. This darkness is outside the world. It's outer darkness. It's outer darkness. So the light of the world isn't in this darkness. There is no hope there, none whatsoever. Now some may say that this is impossible because God is omnipresent. Therefore, he is everywhere. False. Again, Cain's punishment was to go away from the presence of God. So it is definitely possible to be away from God. In fact, look at how Paul describes it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 through 10 says, This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. Since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. 
when he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. Paul says that they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of God. Now, some will say, well, what about Isaiah 66 verse 24? Okay, well, let's read that verse real quick. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 24. And they shall go out and look on the dead bodies of the men who have rebelled against me. For their worm shall not die, their fire shall not be quenched, and they shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Nowhere in this verse does it say that they were in the presence of God. It simply says that they were an abhorrence to all flesh. In other words, those in hell aren't in the presence of God. They may be an abhorrence to others, but they aren't recognizing the presence of them or the presence of God that those people are in. Jeremiah chapter 52 verse 3 says, For because of the anger of the Lord, it came to the point in Jerusalem and Judah that he cast them out from his presence. And Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Jerusalem and Judah were cast out of the presence of God. In other words, they were removed from the ability to communicate with God, feel his presence, and receive the protection that comes with being in his presence. Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 through 11 says, And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with the fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest. Day or night, these worshippers of the beast and its image, and whoever receives the mark of its name. This word presence is the Greek word inopium, which means before, in the sight of. The word presence that Paul uses in the verse we read earlier is the Greek word on the screen, which means face, presence. Paul uses the word on the screen because he's explaining that there will be no communication between them and God. They may be before God, but they won't be in his presence. They won't be able to communicate with him. They won't be able to feel his presence. They will be the complete opposite of those who followed God and obeyed his commands. Revelation chapter 21 verse 3 through 4 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. So while you guys ponder these things, let's sum everything up real quick. Hell is referred to as outer darkness because it is outside the realm of this present darkness that has the light of Jesus that shines through Christians. It's even outside the darkness of sin that we were once in before we knew God and there was no light around us. It's complete darkness that has no light as well as no hope of light coming to save you. It's outside the presence of God. It's outside of hope. It's just darkness. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.